Folks, welcome back. Now is your time to email us, comment on what we talked about. Call us at 304-335-2826. Now, if you don't do it, it's not our fault. We're here for you to talk to us. We do want to hear from you. We want to have perhaps your input on some ideas and what we need to do. I know that what I just taught will be filed up as open for open rebellion, and I have nothing against that. There comes a time for civil disobedience. We, we crossed that line a long time ago. Because we haven't gotten in the streets, so to speak, our children have paid a hell of a price for our apathy. You know, Thomas, or Ben Franklin said one time that, paraphrase, that those who will give up essential liberty for, for a security, temporary security, deserve neither. In Daniel 8, 25, I did a three-hour teaching when I was shown this scripture years ago, right here in Phil's uh, house. When he says that the, the beast system, the Antichrist, would, would destroy many through peace. Well, being real smart, I know what peace meant. It, meant. it meant peace. And I thought it meant that well, he'll destroy the world by the power of the UN forces to eat the peace. The Holy Spirit, I was going to work that day. I was, I was shaving in the bathroom, and the Holy Spirit said, kept telling him, go look that word up. What for? I know what it means. You ever argue with the Lord? <laughs> I don't, I don't even look it up. I don't know what it means. So finally, after prompting, went back there and opened up the concordance. I didn't leave my seat for three hours. Mm. You want to tell what word peace means in Daniel 8, 25? War. False security yeah. and prosperity. That's what it means. <laughs> now understand what Christ said, don't trust man. Understand what Thomas Jefferson, or Ben Franklin said right here. For security's sake, for our welfare checks, social security checks, insurances, whatever... We've sold our birthright. Mm -hmm. Esau did for a bowl of porridge. Maybe we've done a little better than that. But we sold it nonetheless. Mm -hmm. This generation, it gets worse and worse. Now, we're opening the lines up right now for your comments, emails, whatever feel you do. Yeah, two emails. All right, go ahead. Okay, the first one's from, um, I'll move that back. Okay, coupon can here for Pastor Ernie Sanders. He has pneumonia. Oh, and it has a raspy voice, and I'm just learning about your online video process. I will study it and share what I can with Ken, Kevin, and others uh, here to be more effective. We are also experiencing some computer malfunctions. I would like to be able to broadcast Sunday sermons from here at Doers of the Word Baptist Church in a manner similar to what you're doing there on your end. This is from John Darns uh, in Ohio. I am torn between hiding my guns from search and seizure <coughs> military uh, type <coughs> style like they do in Iraq or living and confronting the soldiers. Nehemiah 4.14 mentioned in the last newsletter may be our guide. Does God intend to tell us whether to fight or keep in hiding for our descendant uh, or keep in hiding uh, our, uh, our guns for our descendants? I'm glad to answer that for you, John. If not now, when? What good would it do to hide your guns for future generations to be more dumb down than we are? Mm -hmm. What good would it do to hide your guns and, and hope that your children will take them up? If you don't have enough courage to take them up, why do you depend on them to do that? Right. They are the seed of you, are they not? If you teach them complacency and cowardice by burying your guns, you condemn them to slavery in their own lives. That's just yeah, that easy. Right. The Bible does tell us what to do. We don't need to ask what should we do. It tells us what to do. As Phil said during the eclipse, Christ himself said, if you don't sell a sword, sell your coat and buy one. Exactly. You know We're commanded in 1 Timothy chapter 5 to defend our families. No, do not bury your guns. May bear a couple of them so you can find them later, but have one ready to go. Mm -hmm. And I do. Hell and I will. I mean this to God be the all is holy. I will use what I have to use to defend myself, my wife, my brothers and sisters, I will use it. Living is not the end, uh, the uh, end of all things. Living is, if, if you live through this, it may prove you're a coward. <coughs> it's just that easy. I have two more, Butch. Uh, this one's from Greg in North Carolina. In Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 17 to 21, where God spoke to the nations, congregation, and the earth, and warned them with judgment, who hearkened not to his words. The church have left the straight gate. That consists of the 1611 KJV, old-time preaching, old-time heartfelt salvation, and spirit-filled singing. For the broad way of liberal Bibles, teachers, 
and for liberal preachers deceiving scores with the false repeat after me salvation pizza parties puppets and contemporary music God thought so much <clears throat> of not only his people to warn them of these things but he also warned the nations and the earth also we better repent not only as God God's people but as a nation and the whole earth also Amen. And then Amen. from uh, Mary in Spokane, do you have any practical suggestions for answering the new questions doctors will be asking us? About guns, I assume. Uh, I would yeah, imagine. Our about, about guns, <laughs> perhaps. I'll, I'll be quite honest with you, and this is my answer. It's none of your business. Good. Yep. It's that easy. It's none of your business. Amen. You have no right to know what I have in my home. If you want to find out, come and take it. I'll show you what's there then. You got a turn going, what do you got in your home? How many guns do you have, doctor? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, Good point, Dave. hold on just a second, and we'll see if we can get you on here. Uh, you'll be talking to everybody. Who are you talking to? Uh, uh, go ahead. Oh, that does You haven't heard the speaker on, honey. Oh. <laughs> All right. Try it again. Hello, Pastor Bush. Hello, sir. Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. We're, we're fighting the fight up here. We're uh, fighting against Planned Parenthood and uh, uh, <clears throat> with our prison ministry. I'm part of the death row team. Uh, we go down to minister to death row to the inmates here in Ohio. And uh, we just, uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, we're, we're watching and we'll, we'll uh, you know, keep, you, keep you in prayer. That's very is waiting for you to come up here and preach from our pulpit, his pulpit. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you, Ken. Please, please pray for him. Please pray for us. We'll do that. We'll do that. Yeah, you tell Brother Ernie we'll have him back down sometime as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. And the folks, the lines are open at 304-335-2826. How many have ever heard of Alexander Solzhenitsyn? Yes. Yep. He said this, survival is not the be-all and end-all of a life worthy of man. Sometimes the worst thing that we can know about a man is that he survived. Those who say that life is worth living at any cost have already written for themselves an epitaph of infamy, where there is no cause that no, that no per, and no person that they shall be, not, be, not betray to stay alive. Mm. <clears throat> okay, we've got comments open. Anybody, anybody any more emails, Phil? <clears throat> not right now. We, we can pass the mic. We can pass the mic. Phil, go kick it off, Phil. Say what you want to say. We'll just pass it off. Oh, no feedback. You. Did, you, did you hear that, Butch? Okay, I don't know. Uh, you know why? That's why. Okay, how about this? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. I have two different microphones. Uh, now, there's only one way you can understand what's going on, and that's that's if you look at it from the Creator's view. And we're not to worship the creature, but the Creator. Amen. And so many people um, are totally lost, and like you said, I'll count the cost before you start, and if you don't, if you're not spiritually grounded, don't even begin to fight because you mm -hmm. can't. I did a sermon once, and I wrote a chapter in the book entitled "Obedience is Worship." Worship right. is obedience. Yeah. Whom you obey is who you worship. That's right. That's right. Okay, you want to pass around, Marsha? You want to say anything, Kelly? Marsha. <laughs> To, to the women out there again, I say as I did on the air the other night, in, in the name of Jesus, through the power of He, the Holy Ghost, uh, keep your hearts in tune. We used to have, sing that <coughs> song in church when I was a little younger. Uh, is and that's through prayer and meditation. Meditation is not burning incense and and trying to get in touch with Satanistic beings, uh, demonic beings. It is 
listening to God. We talk to him a lot of times. Sometimes we don't stop <coughs> listening. God is a gentleman. He doesn't enter into our hearts and our minds unless we invite him. And he doesn't speak in the thunder or the fire. He speaks to us in a still, small voice. And when you hear that and you, in obedience, serve him in doing what he asks, then there you are going to be at the place that you can stand strong by your godly husband. If you don't have a godly husband, be in prayer. If he's not mistreating you, asking you to do things against the Word of God, loving, don't lose your power of prayer, your communication with God, because I have witnessed many times you will be a light to his salvation. Yeah. Pray for your children daily, for your grandchildren daily, and be there as the anchor to their haven of rest if they have to leave at some point to where we might not see them again. Still have a pro promise. I know but just forwarding it. And I know that it will only be a temporary time until I spend eternity with my husband here and my brother in Christ, my pastor. Mm -hmm. And just be encouraged, but be of sound mind. A lot of times we're so easy to get off because we're made emotional, and that's okay. Lift your sisters up in Christ. Uh, bind together. We might get, as my grandson says sometime, we're going to get scared. Mamma, I'm scared. But don't hesitate to say, Jesus, I'm scared. Mm -hmm. But fear will not overcome me. Mm -hmm. By the grace and power of the Lord, the comfort of the love, the home that we just led will give me the wisdom and knowledge of how to protect it and keep it as long as God expects us to, even if he's not there. Just be of good courage. God is not mocked. Thanks, sweetheart. The folks, the phone line is open, 304-335-2826. Skype's on. Skype. CTDM Live, or the fact, or the email is still working. <clears throat> Folks, there's so much to say. Scripture starts <coughs> to pray without ceasing. I ask that you will pray for Pastor Butch in this ministry, first of all, for getting the truth out as he does, putting his neck on the line, protect that Yahweh will, will guide and protect him in all his words. Along with his wife, his children, Phil Hudak, same. All those. Thank you for all the folks in here. It's a blessing to be here from Michigan. Pray for my wife. We're going through some hard times, people. I don't know when it's going to be. But if you're soft and you're feminine, it's time to get off the, get off the toilet. Be a man. Stand up. Quit whining. <clears throat> trust in the Lord and uh, get get into his word mm -hmm. I'll let it go to somebody else there's much more I can say but yeah. pass it on thank you for uh, supporting Butch <clears throat> these days are going to be hard on us but you know Christ has given us one hope that hopes within us to seek him first above all things that's the only hope that we can actually live with. And if we die for standing for the love of Christ, hmm. then we get to go home early. And in these days, we have many gods to choose from, but there's only one true God. So let's turn and keep our faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Seek the anointing of the blood from the wall of fire, because warfare... It's not always physical. It is spiritual. Amen. 
I'm going to say something about comment there. Everything you see manifest in the flesh is that spirit. I don't care what it is. A man speaks, thinks, and acts, and does deeds out of his spirit, out of his heart. That's what Christ said. So everything you see in the flesh, whether it's good or evil, is of the spirit. Our goal must be, our desire must be, to make sure that spirit in us, in us is the Holy Spirit witnessing to our spirit. But so whatever we say or do glorifies him first, uplifts the brothers and sisters and stands against evil. That's our greatest concern. Go ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. I uh, want to share and want to captivate everyone's attention around the earth. The angels of heaven, the most high God, the God of Abraham, the Father. A little closer to that. Here you go. And the demons that roam this earth and the devil himself. I'm going to share this. We know that the devil has been instrumentally involved in. I've recently watched a movie, it's called Innocence Betrayed. It's about an hour long. This begins with uh, the, uh, in Turkey, with the butchering of mostly Christian people between the years 1915 to 1917. Mm -hmm. They disarmed the people through legislation. And it was Muslims, these Islamic people. And it went from there, it went to, if I remember correctly, it went to uh, the Ukraine. And from there it went to Germany, then to Southeast Asia, then to, to uh, South, or to Africa. And what they did when they disarmed these people, there was genocide that followed, the butchering of millions of people. When I was in jail in Battle Creek, Michigan, back in 2011, I'm not ashamed to say that. It doesn't bother me a bit to say that I've been to jail. I don't ever want to go again. I don't want none of these people to go to jail, nor any of you folks out there. I, I, I befriended a young man by the name of Siddiqui. And Siddiqui, if you can hear me today, you told me that you just wanted to go back home to Sierra Leone where you're from. Missionaries brought you here, you and your mother, and some of your family. You told me that your daddy was butchered, and so was your baby sister, was butchered by the hands of these demonically possessed or oppressed people. And that's what we got coming here to America. We're going to have genocide here in America. Mm -hmm. They're going to butcher us off. If we don't stand today, we're never going to stand. That's right, brother. We have to go before the Most High. We have to humble ourselves in prayer and in sackcloth and in ashes and call upon Him and seek His face and ask Him to forgive us. Now, He will heal this land one day when He comes back. Amen. He will heal the land. And all of you that serve the devil and are obedient to this evil that's going on, you will perish. Right you on. will be destroyed. Hallelujah. The sword, will you will be butchered yourselves by the God of Abraham himself and with his saints. And I intend, and these people here, and then people around the earth intend, that, it, that intend to be with him, will be part of this. Do we want to be? I don't intend to hurt anybody, but it's your choice. It will come to your doorstep. You will be destroyed for your disobedience against the God of Abraham. That's right. It's your choice. Amen. That gift, that free gift of salvation is open for everybody that seeks him. So That's please, right. don't serve these demonic forces and these the, in the flesh that we have going about the earth today. Don't serve them. <coughs> Defy them. Resist. Thank you. Yeah. The folks, the phone lines are open. They're very quiet. 304-335-2826. Skype's open, and so is the uh, email. If you don't talk to us, it's your fault. Who's that? I'm glad to talk to you people out there. I'm the pastor, Mr. Younger Brother. 
and we should be here personally with us. If this is a good fellowship and a, a good living family, Lord, and we thank you for it. And you people out there have wondered if you should pick up arms and fight. Let me tell you something. What are you going to lose here if you do? You've got a shanty on the hill. You've got a man waiting to you on you in heaven when you get there. Stand up. Be a man. Gird up your loins. Protect your family and your children. We are going to win this battle. And we're not going to win this battle. There's no doubt. We will lose. But Christ is going to win the battle for us. Right. So regardless how we go through it, we're going to end up in heaven. And if you don't know Christ now, this is only heaven you're ever going to know. That's right. right. So you better think it over. You don't want to live through this until you die and go to hell. Hmm. Receive Christ. Then you know where you're going. Amen. 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 Anybody in the other room want to say something? Come on in here if you like. Anybody want to say anything? Come on in. Maybe you don't want to say anything, honey? Okay. All right. Any more comments coming in? Yeah, I think so. Okay, this is uh, Jim from North Carolina. Brother Butch, are you going to have the lieutenant from here in North Carolina back on your radio show? And do you have intel why all these politicians are building underground bunkers? And last but not least, what is that list you read from that had all the quotes from all those famous politicians saying why they wanted <coughs> the New World Order like uh, was on your video? Okay, this, we'll start with the last question first. This is the book we offer the ministry. It's called Quotations to, to Read and Ponder. Daryl Everhart put together for us. It has quotes from the Founding Fathers and we'll call the New Age people that want to bring us into the world order. I don't remember what we asked for. If you want one, send 10 bucks, we'll give you one. I, I know it's more than that, but 10 bucks will be fine, okay? You want a coffee, just, we give it to you free. We can't afford to give them all away, but we do have them for $10 to ministry, okay? You can call the number and get the number for the uh, address of ministry at uh, 800-777-4403. And the other question, again, the field, the first two were... Um, are you going to have the lieutenant back? Okay. We start with that lieutenant. Well, we, <coughs> Bill Hudak and I will meet with we meet with the lieutenant this coming Friday uh, for a sit down video conversation. Of course, video with not his face showing, but we are going to take of course video it, and we'll show uh, his ID with his name not on it, obviously, to prove that he is who he says he is. And we will meet with him then. We'll make those videos uh, and CDs available to you if you want them. But on the radio again, I don't know, it's kind of up to him. Uh, he has had some good friends who cautioned him to be careful, obviously so. Yeah. Not only his career on the line, his life's on the line. Does that answer the book questions, Phil? Uh, one more question that was, uh, <laughs> uh, do you have intel on, on why these uh, politicians are, are building underground bunkers? Underground bunkers have been around for years, and I'm sure they've updated them a lot. Okay. Uh, and not, about, about two hours from here is a place called uh, White Sulphur Springs. They have an, uh, the Green Bar, the Green Bar Mo Hotel has a underground bunker that for years they, they did not existed. Now they would have to take a tour, let's take a tour of part of it. Mm -hmm. It's a huge complex, <coughs> fully contained, self-contained. They can live there for years. So this is nothing new about uh, the underground bunkers for the politicians <coughs> and their elite to be, to be. This has been on, of course, all the TV. And there's even an underground railroad from D.C. to White Sulphur Springs to bring them in. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the... The worms will find their own way to take care of themselves and let the, let the peons uh, die and end in, 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 out in the open. Let's well, say the worms are going to ground. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I just, uh, it, they're there. They really are there. And, and I don't know what else to say about that. But that we can't worry about. We must stay in now. We give account for ourselves. They'll give account for themselves one day also. Payday is coming for all men. If you ask me. Okay. Is everybody through talking then? We can quit any time. Give, give them another one minute to email us or Skype us or call us. If you don't, we're going to shut her down. 304-335-2826. Huh? Just one thing that I keep trying to get away from is just a statement. Another thing to the women, because I are one. Uh, I know that's not... Grammatically correct. Yeah. Grammatically correct, as Phil said it, but... But you are one. I is our one. <laughs> Just remember, ladies, if you have a godly man and you're working in a Christian home, a godly man doesn't mean to get mad, he don't. 
hurt your feelings. Uh, Y'all don't have, if you go and tell everybody constantly, you never have a disagreement, your marriage probably will last because somebody's holding back a lot. And I've made several marriages, I think of one right now. But they never had an argument, they never disagreed. Um, Been divorced for years now. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah. remember, yes, each of us are have to be committed and submit to God our lives. But as God tells us, us as women are to submit to our own husbands. Submission, in that way, submission as our husband is held responsible for all the actions of the family that's under his roof. On either way, remember this. Submission to your husband as his submission to God. <coughs> submission to your husband is a sign of strength. Amen. Not weakness. Amen. Anyone can fight, can argue, fight against submission. Look up if you need to have a Webster's dictionary, not the new ones. The one that they read out of earlier, you can be called called decision and we can do that for you. But anyone can fight battles of trying to not do what God told us to do. Anyone that has experienced submission, once we do, oh it's it's a glorious time because that's what we're supposed to do. We are a helpmeet. And if we're forced into leadership, we will handle it. But because of the submission to our husbands, we'll also understand submission to God as a leader at the head of the home when it's need be. But to submit takes the strongest strength that you will probably ever experience in your life. Because it's to surrender control. Nobody likes to do that. But when you do, you don't kick back and just cruise. But boy, it's a blessing. Yeah. So look up submission and study it in the Word of God. Submission is a lot stronger than the liberated women movements. Submission. I am liberated by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I have another email, Marshall. Okay. Okay, this is from uh, Judd in Michigan. Oh, right, Brother Judd. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people thou shalt, thou, uh, people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. <laughs> Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee turn not from turn not from it to the right or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and amen. night amen that thou mayest observe to amen. Do according to all that is written therein amen for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. Amen. Right on. Have not I command? Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whether so, so ever thou goest. I stand with you in solidarity before the living God, and I praise Him for men like you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Okay, if that's all, and I assume it is, we're going to close for this session. Be back here again in two weeks. I think it's the first of February, I believe, right at that. Another Bible study and get together. Well, what what <coughs> happens between now and two weeks, now only a father knows. But I would ask you to, to determine in your heart what you need to do. And when the time comes, do it. If your brother cries for help, as Nehemiah said, Nehemiah 4, if you need help, you blow the trumpet, we'll come running. If your brother cries for help, your next door neighbor, or in the next county or next state, or the ten states away, if they cry for help, true men of God need to rally. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't afford to miss work. Mm. I can't afford this. Well, 
Tell me something. How can you afford not to? True. Hallelujah. Right on, brother. If a, if a, if a good sheriff decides to defend this county in a different state, go to that county and help that sheriff. Amen. Let him deputize you. It is time, men and women, but I'm talking now, I hope, to men. It is time, it is past time for you to gird up your loins and put on your sword. Put on the helmet, take up the, take up the shield, put on the breastplate, and get ready for battle. That's exactly right. And if you're not going to do that, I ask you this. Turn this program off and don't listen to me anymore. Amen. I, I don't need dead weight. I need people who will stand. Amen. And I mean death by my heart. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay. Anybody else under public comment? Mr. Bonner? <clears throat> Thanks for the opportunity. My name's Mark Bonner, and I'm from the Harmon area. And I'd like to uh, second Mr. House's comments and also talk about a separate issue. As you know, in the national media and on the, in the Senate House and at the White House, gun control legislation is being discussed in response to what happened in Connecticut. And uh, there's a group of senators and other people in D.C. that's been pushing a gun control agenda for years. Senator Dianne Feinstein has been quoted as saying, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn your guns in, if she had her way. And there's been numerous studies done where gun control has taken place in England and Australia. And the studies show that violent crime goes up when that happens. And uh, you know, the honest people turn their guns in, and then the the illegal people that's, that's doing drugs or whatever, the black market thrives and those people have all the guns they want. And they know they can go in and, and rob so and so because they're not armed, they can't protect themselves. So as a, as a county commission, I wondered if you all would consider authoring a letter to our two senators and congressperson in effect that uh, that the Randolph County Commission would urge them not to support any bill that has gun control legislation involved. We will take it under consideration. Okay, thanks for your time. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Mr. Hudoff, if you wouldn't. Yes, thank you. If you don't mind, I'll just stand here and take my room. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'd like to take credit for that picture, but I didn't do it. But that, that was a nice one. Yeah. If my daughter would, she's going to pass out to the, the uh, commissioners and to the sheriff uh, signed copies of, of Sheriff Richard Mack's book, uh, County Sheriff, America's Last Hope. And also there's a uh, pamphlet called The Victory for State Sovereignty. Oh, I'm sorry. To be honest with you, this is the most nervous I've ever been because this is the most important address that I've ever given. And, and Sheriff, I want to congratulate you for, for, for being the Sheriff. I'm glad you Thank are. You. Uh, I, I agree with Mark Bonner. I also agree with Mr. House, uh, Pastor House. We're, we're in a terrible mess here, folks. And you folks are, uh, I appreciate you taking the, the responsibility of being our representatives in, in county government because we're, we, we see a big problem. And in this book, uh, the introduction, here's what it says. America is at the threshold of what appears to be the utter despotism, to be utter despotism. People from every state and countryside are begging to be left alone and treated as freemen. Thomas Jefferson often, when all government shall be drawn to Washington as the center of all power, it will render powerless the checks provided and will become as venal and oppressive as the government from which we separated. Well, President Jefferson was right, and now <coughs> what do we do about it? Who will stop this venal and oppressive government, as Jefferson so firmly warned us? I'm going to play a video now. It's seven minutes long, and it's going to, it's going to paint a picture. It's going, to, it's going to put some pieces together that it, it's self-explanatory. One is the quote that, that Mark mentioned. 
the president is going to act or executive orders, executive action that can be taken. We haven't decided what that is yet, but we're compiling it all with the help of the attorney general and, uh, and all the rest of the cabinet members, as well as legislative action we believe is required. So uh, I appreciate you very much being here. The president is going to act or executive orders, executive action that can be taken. We haven't decided what that is yet, but we're compiling it all with the help of the attorney general and, uh, and all the rest of the cabinet members, as well as legislative action we believe is required. And that's what I think we need to do with guns, really change the way in which people think about that, to think about guns. Now, this is not going to be something that's very easy to do. It's anti-gun message. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. California Senator Dianne Feinstein worked for more than a year to get the assault weapons bill passed in the face of ferocious opposition from the National Rifle Association. She says she got the best she could. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. I could not do that. The votes weren't here. This is a SIG 550. It's designed to destroy anything standing within its 400 meter trajectory. And there are over 500,000 of them kept in Swiss homes. Guns and shooting are a strong Swiss tradition. Basic military training is mandatory for young men. And afterwards, they're required to keep their weapon at home. Mark Heim is the Ticino representative for the lobby group ProTel. Uh, basically, this was my father's military rifle. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, he got to keep it when he was finished. I have my grandfather's rifle in the office, hanging on the wall. Uh, this was mine when I did service, which is quite an old one. It was introduced in 1957. It was used until 1990. And this is my son's. Uh, that's the uh, current model. That's what's being used today. That's what we'll be using uh, to shoot the Feldschießen today. The Feldschießen, or Tiro Federale in Campania, as it's known in these parts, is an annual Swiss event, and it's also the largest shooting festival in the world. Roughly 200,000 people come out to target practice all across the country. Ammunition is provided by the government. So if somebody wants to build a coal power plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that uh, greenhouse gas that's being emitted. I've never seen anything like it. The irony couldn't be richer. The hypocrisy couldn't be more outrageous. The message couldn't be more meaningful. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. 
This week, the Journal News continues to hide, refusing to explain why they printed the names and addresses of legal gun owners, including yours truly. And by the way, although it's none of your business, there's a reason people have guns. We don't need your sanctimonious permission. And you dare put our families in danger? You pry into our lives? You put our privacy and security and our safety in jeopardy? As far as these so-called assault weapons, you say that they don't have any defense use. You tell that to the guy that I saw on a videotape of the L.A. riot, standing up on his rooftop, protecting his property and his life from an entire mob with one of these so-called assault weapons. Tell me that he didn't have a legitimate self-defense use. Just one final statement. I'm, I've been sitting here getting more and more fed up with all of this talk about these pieces of machinery having no legitimate sporting purpose, no legitimate hunting purpose, People, that is not the point of the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is not about duck hunting. And I know I'm not going to make very many friends saying this, but it's about our right, all of our right, to be able to protect ourselves from all of you guys up there. I was angry at myself for having made what I realize now was an incredibly stupid decision to obey a bad law and allow my family to get killed. And I was mad at my legislature because I absolutely felt that they had legislated me out of the right to protect myself and my family. This is Picking School, and I know Sheriff Brady knows where it is. I want to ask you something, Sheriff. <coughs> um, if there's a problem there, and I'd be there today if I wasn't here, what would be the average response time for somebody to get there, the average? Uh, just off the top of my head, just roughly I would say approximately 35 to 40 minutes. If that's, and if the weather's bad? Weather's bad, it could be, could be longer than that. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, I had my daughter here. I, we, we tease and call her Typhoid Mary because she's not allowed in that building because she's so dangerous. <laughs> but uh, she's uh, being homebound instructed, and her response time is about five seconds. She's got a 357 loaded and close to her. And that's what I call good gun control. Two shots, two deer. Okay? She's quite able to, to defend herself. <laughs> now, Sheriff, um, I want to ask you, I'm on a petition for our county to do the proper response to what's happening in schools, and that is to arm the staff the sheriff's, uh, under the Sheriff Department's direction <clears throat> to make sure that they, they are qualified, that they are trained, and that, and that when she goes back to school, that she's going to have, uh, you know, if she goes back right now, she's going to actually be more in more danger than she is right now. And that's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to, I, I, I know that's happening around the country. I wouldn't put a sign up in my yard to say, this is a gun-free, uh, home, homebound instructed home, would I? But we've done that to our schools. We've said that they're, they're, they're gun-free zones, and that sets them up as a target. Okay, and so, you know, it's very important. Now, I got this book. It was given to me in uh, two, 2003. I taught this man's daughter. His name is Charles Umpenauer, and he wrote a book, Freedom, A Fading Illusion. He brought this to my house, signed it, and gave it to me. He knew I was uh, very interested in freedoms, okay? And he worked for the Defense Department. And here's the introduction. I want to read this. The title, Freedom, A Fading Illusion, indicates, as I perceive it, American society today, that America has gradually become less free as it evolves into a serfdom or slave society by the product, by uh, the byproduct of globalization. Our federal government continues to become more autocratic as it assumes power is not granted to it. Uh, by the Constitution. That's what is happening. That's why I'm here, because this is local government. This is where it really hits the road. But if, if the federal government is trying to take away our rights, 
uh, something has to be done. So I'm appealing to you folks. When I came in here and gave a, a 10 minute or so presentation because the Department of Homeland Security had ordered 450 million rounds of 40 caliber hollow points. I worked it out. I showed you how it would take 20.47 miles of pickup trucks, F-150s, bumper to bumper, from here to Huttonsville Prison, loaded with ammunition that's designed to kill and can only be used domestically. It can't be used in war. You can't use 40 caliber hollow points. Okay, it's, uh, I forget how, 17 million pounds. Well, guess what, folks? We're now up to 1.6 billion rounds. More than double that. There's something wrong here, folks. You can now take the pickup trucks, run them all the way from Huttonsville Prison, all the way to Harmon, bumper to bumper. In the, and that's in the last, what says, uh, nine months. Jews for Preservation of Firearms Ownership. Just wrote a book. It's called Death by Gun Control. Again, I'm bringing up what Mark brought up. In the 20th century, 170 million people were murdered by their own governments. More killed than by crime and more killed than by war. This is Jews on and out, and you can see why they'd be interested. So this doesn't have to be. But it's going to take an action on, on the people's part, on government's part, on people that love our, uh, the Constitution. Now, the Constitution... It doesn't give us those rights. It just reiterates the unalienable rights that we have. Okay, and and in the Bible, in Luke, when Christ was going to leave, when Jesus was going to leave the earth, he told his disciples to sell their cloaks and buy a sword. So, uh, I leave with the message that there is hope. I have a lot more to show you. Of course, I'm not going to show it to you now. I'm going to give this to, uh, this is an audio of a person who's been in law enforcement in North Carolina for 30 some years, and he says in here that there is a plan to, to forcefully take the gun, the guns of the people of the United States, and I'm going to meet with this man, uh, it's, it's become viral on YouTube, because I don't like what I see, a lot of people do not like what they see, West Virginia has been declared, you know, you declare war on guns and war on coal, you declared war on West Virginia. So uh, I, I want you to, to uh, look at that. This is the PowerPoint that I just, I just showed you. Uh, I want to give this to you. And I just want to be a resource. I, I've been studying this kind of thing for a long time. And I will not surrender my guns. Sheriff Brady, you, I saw your picture in the paper and you took an oath to uphold the Constitution. I did too as a teacher. Um, your, your job is a little more uh, involved than mine. But I will not turn in my guns. I will not turn in my guns. And I know that you... Thank you.